Well, the Americans have not hidden the reasons for those bases. They have made it very clear is to protect American interests in Africa. What are the American interests in Africa? The American interest in Africa is not to protect the African people. That's not an American interest. One discernible American interest in Africa is minerals. To protect their access to strategic minerals. Today, DRC holds about 70% of the world's cobalt deposits. Zambia, which is a neighbor to DRC, also has got huge deposits. Niger holds 70% of the world's uranium deposits. DRC has uranium, Zambia has uranium, Namibia has uranium. These are strategic minerals. These are what the Americans are protecting. Protecting from who? From us, the Africans, the owners of these minerals? Certainly not. They are trying to protect, to monopolize these minerals, these strategic minerals. Protect, keep away primarily China. Their talk is about China, 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 China. But China is not an enemy of Africa. We have never been colonized by China. There is no single African country that was a, a colony of China. Even today, China has never colonized and is not intending to colonize an African country. China has never shown any imperial interest in Africa. China was there with us. In our liberation struggles, China supported us. When the West was colonizing us, China was helping to liberate us. China was there to defend our independence economically and otherwise. For instance, my country, Zambia, it was blockaded. All our neighboring country were still under colonialism. We had no access to the ports from Mozambique, from South Africa, from Namibia, from Angola. But there was no proper road, there was no proper, there was no rail. We asked the Americans, the British, to help us put up a rail system to the port of Dar es Salaam, they refused. President Nyerere of Tanzania came on behalf of Zambia and Tanzania to ask the leadership of China under Chairman Mao, Joe and Lai, for help to build a rail. China at that time did not have the capacity, but China said there's no way they have to do it. They mobilized both the human capital, the materials that were needed, the finances that were needed. It was a very difficult task. China did not have that type of rail infrastructure in its own country, but the Chinese people were ready to build that for us. And in the process, China lost 70 of its own citizens, of its own people, in the construction of that layer. The remains of those 70 Chinese people still lie in Zambia. We have 70 Chinese people buried in Zambia today. We have Chinese solidarity that will never be forgotten, that will last forever. At that time, China did not have a single mine in Africa. They did not have a single corporation operating in Africa. Not a single one. So it was selfless, noble assistance to fellow brothers and sisters. China has continued, even now when it's doing well, to cooperate with Africa. If you go to Africa today, you see a big hospital. 99.99% probability is that it has been built by China. If you see a big airport today that is new in Africa, it's a very high probability that it has been built by China. If you see a rail network that is new, know that it has been built by China. You see a big bridge that is new, it has been built by China. 
China is there for us. Yes, there are challenges here and there. And the Chinese authorities are dealing with those challenges. And in the first place, let's not forget that our own colonization was done with military, with force, brutal force. It was maintained with brutal force. It is being continued today in a new way again with the militarization of the African continent. Whenever there is resistance to their mining interests, they have not hesitated to use the military. So part of the militarization that we are seeing of the African, on the African continent, one is to protect their minerals and to ensure that they enjoy the, the, use, the exploitation of these minerals at the exclusion of China and the others who are progressive. 